Armageddon. But first, I want to say uh, good afternoon, everybody. And I hope I don't go to sleep on you. <laughs> so, but we're going to see if we can get through this lesson because I am really beat up. But the whole thing is, this gospel has to go into all the world. And the Lord is blessing the Israel of God because we are teaching it in the all of the world. We have people from places on the planet that I didn't even know existed. But these are the end days. And this lesson here that we're going to deal with Armageddon, I'm going to tell you something. I'm convinced that uh, we're going to see this time. And I'm not convinced because I'm an emotional person. I'm convinced because all the prophecies are on point. Everything is in order. We have Western Europe over there, the European uh, Union. They are in order. They have a little problem with England, but they've always had some problem with England. Then Russia is putting it, her house in order. That's why I believe that the Lord installed this president that we have now <laughs> so he would not get in Putin's way. Because Russia is putting their house in order. Mm -hmm. And every day they are talking about building the temple in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. We are here. And this is something that the Lord is going to bring on the world, sister and brother, that the world is not ready for. Because nobody wants to listen to the word of God. Everybody has these religions and all these denominations, like I rode in the plane with a young lady today. Her brother's a preacher, her father's a preacher. And uh, I just listened to her for a minute, and I, I, I decided I wouldn't even preach to her because she is caught up on this thing. You know, everybody is holy, and the Lord loves everybody. And so the Lord is going to just take people off the earth. When Jesus come, you know, he's just going to rapture him some people off and go back to heaven. It's not like that, sisters and brothers. It's going to get real ugly here on this planet. And the Lord is the one that's going to bring it. That's why he had it all written. Because nobody wants to deal with prophecy because they don't want to deal with the reality that the Lord is not pleased with his creation. And he is going to hurt it real bad. But he's going to fix it. Now, we're going to deal with this Armageddon. We're going to start reading at Jeremiah, the 25th chapter. Because the Lord didn't put all these prophecies in these books for nothing. And you get a lot of people now that are, I call Roman Christians. Mm -hmm. They try to dismiss the Old Testament. But I tell people all the time, I can go in the Old Testament and preach the resurrection. I can go in the Old Testament and preach Jesus. Never get beyond Malachi. <laughs> all them things that Paul and the apostles preached and what Jesus said, I can preach it right out of this Old Testament system. Amen. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That means the word of prophecy. Jesus didn't bring nothing new. What he did was he came and he died for your sins and then he made you understand that you have to still deal with this word that he was the one that dictated it to the prophets, not the father. Right. Father gave it to him and he brought it. And that's one of the greatest mysteries in the Roman Christian world and some also in some of my Hebrew brothers' world, that Jesus is the only God that we have ever dealt with. And I try and push also among my, uh, uh, among the he my Hebrew brothers and also among the uh, uh, Roman Christians that we are the original Christians. Amen. We're the ones that put Christianity on the board. And it's nothing like what we have been presented today, sister and brother. Amen. Now we're going to start this at 25th chapter of Jeremiah and we're going to start reading at verse 1 because sisters and brothers, it's some Hard stuff that's going to come on this world. And if you are in the wrong place and your mind is in the wrong place, you're going to have a problem. 25 and 1. Okay, read it. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Uh huh. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah uh -huh. and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Go ahead. saying... From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, 
that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, uh -huh. rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. He said, look, I've been coming for a long time. From one king, I've been coming every day prophesying to you, but you wouldn't listen. Israel had a problem listening to the word of God, just like the world have it. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, uh -huh. rising early and sending them. Uh -huh. But ye have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. Now, because you would not listen to the Lord, see, the Lord is one thing. He will come and speak to you. He'll try to turn you away by guiding you with his word. But if you refuse to listen, then he bring the drama on your sister and brother. Mm -hmm. That's the way the Lord operates. Is you will not maintain your way of thinking. Not as long as God is on the throne. Mm. So he said, now I came, and you wouldn't listen, you wouldn't incline your ear. Skip down to verse 8, and go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. because ye have not heard my words, uh -huh. behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. He said, now look, because you would not listen, I'm going to bring the families of the north. That's king Nebuchadnezzar and all the kings that was under him. Because he said, my servant, all people, even the angels of God's servant, sister and brother. This is what the world don't understand. Satan is not running around by himself. God controls him. Right. And when Satan starts to do things to you, that's because God is mad at you. Mm -hmm. Everybody and everything serve God. So Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. he served God too. Just like the Lord called Russia his army. Right. Because when he gets ready for Russia to go into action, he's going to call them, and they're going to do exactly what he wants them to do. Jeez. I just want you to understand, sisters and brothers, nothing is run amok on this earth. It is all under control because we would not obey. He says, I'm going to bring Nebuchadnezzar and all the families of the north. Go ahead and read. And will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof Go ahead. and against all these nations round about uh -huh. and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolation. He says, I'm going to bring Nebuchadnezzar down and I'm going to destroy all of these lands. I'm going to destroy not only uh, uh, Judah, but all of the outlying la uh, land, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar took everything down because Israel wouldn't obey. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. Uh -huh. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. They're going to serve him 70 years. This 70 years went a little further, sister and brother. Because king of Babylon, his, uh, uh, when, his, uh, when the 70 years was up, the people went back and re, uh, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah them and rebuilt the temple and everything. But the whole thing is this 70 turned into 70 weeks because you got the king of Babylon, but then you have another king, which is called Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. And it shall come to pass, when 70 years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon uh -huh. and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it perpetual desolations. Now, this let me know that this is the future king, because Nebuchadnezzar died, peaceful death. Mm -hmm. His son took over, and his son threw a big party and used the holy vessels of God, you know, and drank out of them and with all his concubines. Then the Lord sent a finger and wrote on the plaster of the wall. Mm -hmm. So you've been weighed in the balance, you've been found wanting, and behold, your kingdom is given to the Medes and the Persians. Mm -hmm. So that night the Lord had him killed, and Darius the Mede inherited the kingdom. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Babylon was not talk, uh, taken down by a wall. It was a smooth transition from the Babylonians to the Medes. And later on to the Persia. Go ahead and finish that. That's the end of 12. Skip down to verse 14. For and, this, many, and this is what, let, and look what he says here. This really takes us to the future. Go ahead and read. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. Uh -huh. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now he said many nations going to serve themselves. Many. Look, sisters and brothers. The only one that took over from Babylon is the Medes and the Persians. The Medes took over, and then the Persians, they was all there, but the Persians also took over later, but they came up, those, they're the ones that made the big history. That's why you hear about the Persian Empire. You don't hear about the Midian Empire too much. But Babylon was not taken down by a whole lot of nations. It wasn't taken down at all. 
It was just inherited mm -hmm. with the death of Nebuchadnezzar's son. Go, uh, go ahead and read. Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, uh -huh. take the wine cup of this of this fury at my hand and cause all nations to whom I will send thee to drink it. Go ahead. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. So he, this wine cup he's talking about, this is a cup of this wrath, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to take it to all nations I send you and make them drink it. Because nobody's going to escape this because he's talking future here. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. Verse 17. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink uh -huh. unto whom the Lord has sent me. He said, I made them all drink. Nobody escaped. Skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth, uh -huh. and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So that when you're talking about all the kings of the earth, which are upon the face of the earth, and in, that includes everybody, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to escape what the Lord is going to do. I mean, like nobody. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the God of Israel, Drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more. Go ahead. Because of the sword which I will send among you. Uh-huh. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at thine hand to drink, then thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. ye shall certainly drink. He said, you're going to certainly drink. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to escape this. Because the Lord let you know Judah had to, uh, uh, a drink of this. So if his people going to drink of it, everybody drinks of it. Go ahead and read. 29. For lo... I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. That's Jerusalem, sister and brother, because Nebuchadnezzar is the one that took Ju Jerusalem down. I mean, when Nebuchadnezzar got through, there was no more nation of Judah, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. It was all gone. He said, so behold, I begin to take down the city which is called by my name. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And should ye be utterly unpunished? Uh-huh. Ye shall not be unpunished. Go ahead. For I will call for a sword upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Uh -huh. saith the Lord of hosts. All in habits, that cover everybody, don't it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words, and say thou unto them, uh -huh. the Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Go ahead. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. Uh -huh. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. We're going to show you, sister and brother, that the Lord going to kill so many people, there's going to be enough blood to flow the boat. Mm -hmm. He's he going to roll from Zion and he's going to give a shout. That's mm -hmm. what he going that's when he's coming. That's why first Thessalonians the fourth chapter. The Lord shall descend with the shout of the archangel mm -hmm. and with the trump of God. Mm -hmm. He ain't just coming to save a few people. He's coming to take down his earth, sister and brother. So we're going to give a shout, and we're going to tread the wine press. Go ahead and read. 31. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. Go ahead. For the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. Uh-huh. He will plead with all flesh. Go ahead. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, Go ahead. saith the Lord. Uh-huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Look, sisters and brothers, tell me the Lord don't do evil. God is the one that created evil. You understand? And he's going to bring this. He said, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Go ahead and read. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Uh-huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. That's a lot of dead people, ain't it? The slain of the Lord going to be from one end of the earth even to the other. There's never been a time like this, sister and brother. Because when the Lord come, he's going to take down the immediate, but he's going to kill all wicked all over. I'm telling you, they're going to take down the armies, all these governments. When he get through, there ain't going to be even one government left, and that's him. Teach. <laughs> Go ahead and read. They shall not be lamented, uh -huh. neither gathered, nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. They're going to be so many killed until he's going to have to bring in the beast to eat these people. He's going to have to bring in the birds of prey to eat these people. See, this world just don't have a clue what's going on. Just like Noah and them didn't have a clue that God was going to drown the whole world. But he saved Noah. He's done it before. This time, instead of destroying the whole world, he's just going to go over the whole world and he's going to take down all those that will not adhere to his word. So what time did the Lord give us as a sign to show when it's going to start? 
Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter. See, this is what I know, like about this God, sisters and brothers. He tell you what's going to do, what he's going to do to you. He tell you when he's going to do it to you. And he's going to tell you when, when the, the, and show you the time that he's going to do it to you. Mm -hmm. So if you have any uh, uh, service of God in you, if you want to serve God and do right, and if you have your house in order, you can escape this. All this stuff that we're going to read about, true servants of God that walks in the ways and believe in God and obey him will escape this. Amen. You'll be in a place that's called the wilderness, sister and brother. And the whole world will have to deal with this but you. He said, look, you're going to see it with your eyes. A thousand going to fall at your right hand and ten thousand at your left. But none is going to come near you. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. And this is what we are trying to escape, sisters and brothers. Now, but when does it start? This is when Jesus, uh, when the apostle was admiring the temple. Let's start in Matthew 24 and verse 1. 24 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. <clears throat> and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be one here, left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. See, they was admiring the temple. He said, look, you see this? Not, that, that's, this temple is going to be destroyed. <coughs> not going to have one stone left upon another. And that happened in 70 AD when Titus took down, well, after, after Ezra and Nehemiah them went, they built a temple, and it was there until Jesus came. And then Israel rebelled against Rome. And what happened? The Romans took them down, and in 7 AD, Titus killed a whole lot of Israelites, and the ones that he didn't kill, he scattered them all over the Mediterranean. That's why we got in, uh, 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 north of the Mediterranean and south, which is Europe and Africa, sister and brother. Right, right. And then he tore down everything, broke down the walls, everything. All that happened in 70 AD. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is pay attention and look at history. And you can see that God called this thing from the beginning. Go ahead and read. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, they made some specific questions here. When is the temple going to be torn down? When is it going to be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? But this is strange the way Jesus answered first, this is how the first thing that came out of his mouth. <laughs> Let's read this. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. He said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name. For many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. Saying that I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Where do you find all these people at? Right. <laughs> right. Like, where are they? <laughs> You find them in just about every pulpit tomorrow. Mm. All said Jesus is the Christ. We all love him, but then they turn around and feed you doctrine that's not even written in this book, not even close to it. He warned you, and nobody paid no attention. That's why I said nobody pays no attention to the Lord. They didn't pay attention then, and they ain't paying it now. He, if people took this and understood that he, this warning wouldn't be nobody in the churches tomorrow. Right. The preacher showed up and he had him up the bill. <laughs> and this is not throwing salt on the other ministers. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you what Jesus said. Jesus. Now skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise uh -huh. and shall deceive many. And he told you, but ain't nobody looking. Mm -hmm. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Skip down to verse 14. Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness uh -huh. unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And this gospel has to be preached for a witness. Because when the Lord how these people stand before him, he's going to tell them, I brought this to your nation. Mm -hmm. I brought this to your community. I brought this to your family. Mm. But you didn't listen. Mm. And if you're in that book of life, you stand a good chance of being blotted out, sisters and brothers. He said, but once this is preached in all <coughs> nations, then the end shall come. And because the Lord will not convict anybody that is not informed, I have not heard of his word. So if it will not change you, it's going to convict you. Mm. Either way, the Lord's word is going to stand. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. 
When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now so when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by, standing in the holy place, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Now what if you're a New Testament Christian? you will never go back and read Daniel the prophet, would you? Therefore, you will not know who the abomination of desolation is. Most, I tell you, I, everybody in here, before you come into this kind of teaching, you didn't have a clue who the abomination of desolation was. Right. And you didn't know what a holy place was. The abomination, sisters and brothers, is the Pope of Rome, the last one. The whole religion is abominable before <laughs> God, sisters and brothers, because it's contrary. You understand? Because they're the ones that changed the Sabbath day from the seventh day to the first day. Emperor Constantine, go in your history book and look at it. This is what I'm saying. God said he's going to come to earth. They said, God's coming to heaven. Mm -hmm. Jesus told you four times that all that the Father give him, he would lose nothing but raise them up at the last day. What does the last day mean? Right. That means that there ain't no day after it. Isn't that correct? Right. But people are saying, well, you know, at every funeral, I go, you know, this is good old so-and-so. And, you know, she was a good sister. He was a good brother. He's looking down from heaven smiling. He done made the transition. He done made the homecoming. That's Satan doctrine, sister and brother. Satan is the one that get kicked, got kicked out of heaven. So he want to go back home. His desire is to make his homecoming. But the Lord said, that ain't going to happen. I'm going to put you in the pit, and then later on, I'm going to put you in the lake of fire. Mm. But I'm just telling you where the doctrine come from. Right. But we don't pay no attention. So he said, look, when you see the abomination of desolation, standing in the holy place, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, whoso read it, let him understand. Go ahead and read. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh -huh. Let him which is up on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Go ahead. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Uh -huh. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to uh -huh. this time. No, nor ever shall be. Now, this is going to be a time so bad until the worst time that you can think about that thing that happened on this earth, this is going to be worse than that. Right. And he said, and it should never be another time like this. Because if it did, what would happen? Go ahead and read. 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Uh -huh. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See, and if the Lord don't intervene then, they would kill everybody on the planet. When Jesus made this statement, you didn't have a weapon big enough to destroy everything on the planet. But now you have everybody with a weapon to destroy. The United States have an uh, uh, abundance of nuclear weapons. Right. Russia have it. India have it. Jerusalem have it. I mean, everybody have it now. That's why the Lord said, I'm going to have to intervene. Because if I don't shorten these days, this man would kill Everything that breathes. Mm. And we have the capacity to do it now, sisters and brothers. But then, after this time, here come the Lord. Skip down to verse 29. In fact, he is going to end this time. Verse 29, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Shall the sun be darkened. Uh -huh. And the moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh -huh. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Uh -huh. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. No, they want Jesus to come. But why then are all the tribes of the earth going to mourn, sisters and brothers? Right. Because when he comes, he's going to do some real damage. Mm -hmm. Sun going to be dark and the moon going to turn red. The stars going to fall. That's what Peter said. The heavens going to be on fire. That's when I understood then that when they make these entries, because some stars big enough to hurt the earth by itself. Mm -hmm. But they're going to burn up on the entry. And it's not going to get here, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. But still then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Go ahead and read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh huh. And he shall send his angels. Now they're going to see him coming with power and with great glory. Mm -hmm. Why are they going to mourn? Let me go and show you why they are going to mourn. Let's go into Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah chapter 34. So everybody tell you all these little beautiful stories about Jesus. I'm going to tell you the other side that they don't pay no attention to. Right. And the whole thing is, I am convinced that we're going to see this. People think I'm crazy when I say I'm gonna, I, don't, I ain't going to die, I'm going to make the change. <laughs> <laughs> I might be crazy, but I'm crazy according to prophecy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Praise God. I'm looking at this book. The Lord, people thought, you know, you know, nobody ever think that Jesus is going to come in somebody's generation. Mm. And I'm believing that it's going to be mine. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably older than most people in this room. So if, I'm, if it's going to be in mine, you're going to be here too. Right. Unless you die some unseemly death. Right. Now let's start at verse 1. Isaiah 34 and 1. This is why the earth is going to mourn, sisters and brothers, because the Lord is going to do some real stuff when he comes. 34 and 1. Okay, read. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Uh -huh. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, uh -huh. the world, and all things that come forth of it. That means he's talking to everybody then, isn't he? I mean, he wants everybody to hear this. Mm. Go ahead and read. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. I mean, nobody's escaped, sisters and brothers. This is what the Lord tells these people. Look, you're going to drink in a cup of my wrath because my people, Israel, that's called by my name, mm. they drunk of it, and ain't nobody else going to get away with it. If, they, if I had to do them, I'm going to do everybody. And we have been done, sisters and brothers. That's why you're sitting here right now. Jeez. The proof is in the foot. Go ahead and read. And his fury upon all their armies. Uh -huh. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Go ahead. Their slain also shall be cast out. Uh -huh. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Uh -huh. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. That's how many people are going to get killed, sister. They're going to kill. His blood going to be so thick it's going to look like the mountain is melted. Mm. But man don't think about this because man don't read this kind of stuff. Oh, you know, the Lord ain't going to do that. He's not going to do that. He told Israel. He said, look, because you don't obey me, I'm going to scatter you in all days of the world. I'm going to send you into Egypt again to this. That's the house of bondage because he didn't send Egypt down there. And, one, and, buy, and, and ships. And once you get there, you're going to be sold as male and female slaves and ain't nobody going to buy you out of it. You're going to be hid away in prison houses. The young men going to be on the head of every corner with the fear of God in them. It's mad. That's why you can't even walk down. All oh, that's been prophesied, sisters and brothers. Everything is in order. He called the nations in order. But don't nobody pay no attention. They think things are just happening. Things just don't happen in this creation. Right. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 4. Uh -huh. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down uh -huh. as a leaf falls off the, uh, from the vine, now, and as the falling of the fig from the fig tree. Now, how many times that's going to happen, sisters and brothers? Lord told you in Matthew 24 that's going to happen. It's going to happen here. It ain't going to happen but one time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Uh -huh. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. Now, I'd hate to be these people. You know who Idumia is? These are the Edomites. Right. These are the ones that the world called Jews, and they call themselves Jews. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people, look, don't, uh, don't dislike those people. Weep for them. Because you can't save them, and don't get yourself in trouble by trying to hate them. Right. Don't hate nobody. Jeez. Because anybody that hate, you outside the boundaries of God, sisters and brothers. Right. Leave God, leave vengeance to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he said, look, I do me, you got a little special, the, the people of my curse to judgment. Mm -hmm. Just like we was cursed to captivity and scattered and slavery, theirs going to get come, but it's going to come in the end days at the coming of the Lord, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Verse 6, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness uh -huh. and with the blood of lambs and goats, uh -huh. with the fat of kidneys of rams. Go ahead. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah 
and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. See, he's not talking about rams like on animal system brothers. This blood he's talking about doing is Idumeans, which is the Greek name for Edomite, for Esau. The Lord have a great wrath that he's going to drop on them when he drop on the world. But he's going to get everybody, but he's going to deal with them too. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses. Uh-huh. For the controversy of Zion. And he's going he to clear up the controversy who Jerusalem belonged to, sisters and brothers. When? In the year of the Lord's vengeance, sisters and brothers. Let's look at this vengeance. Let's go into Revelation, the sixth chapter, and we're going to show you that the Lord had this written all over the Bible because he want us to understand that there's some bad times coming, and you can deliver yourself. You just have to know how. Right. Right. And this is the problem. If you don't know nobody read, and you don't know what's coming, how can you possibly know how to escape it? That's why the Lord said he's going to come up on this earth like a thief in the night. Had you known what time the thief was coming right. to burglarize your house, you'd be sitting there with a pistol, wouldn't you? <laughs> In other words, you ain't going to get had. But if you knew when the Lord was, come, was coming and what he was going to do, you set your house in order. Mm -hmm. You find out what the Lord wants you to do, and you do it. That's what's required. Right. But don't nobody want to obey. Everybody want to do what they want to do. Let's start at verse 12. Because this is something that's got to happen, and it's going to happen in his time. 6 and 12. Go ahead and read. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Uh-huh. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Uh-huh. And the moon became as blood. Uh-huh. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs. See how the Lord did this? That's the third time we read this, isn't it? Right. The Lord letting you know that this is for real. Written by the prophets and the apostles. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. Uh-huh. And the, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Ezekiel just, uh, Isaiah just told you that. How many times the Lord, the heaven's going to roll back like a scroll, sister and brother? One time. One time. Go ahead and read. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the uh, mountains. Uh-huh. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Now they're going to realize, wait a minute, this thing is for real. Right. And they have a row of back sisters and brothers, and they're going to see Jesus standing there. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to say, instead of saying, Lord, have mercy, we've been so wrong and genuine repent because he's a merciful God. If you repent on the last day, he will deliver you, just like he did the thief on the last day of his life. Teach. He promised you. The thief asked him, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. And he's telling him, today, but it was, people think they was talking about that day, but he was really saying, today I'm promising you right. when I come into my kingdom, right. I will, in, in, the par my, uh, in the paradise, you're going to be with me. Right. Mm -hmm. That's when he comes, sisters and brothers. Thief can't go before Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets. They ain't coming until the first resurrection. Right. But this guy repented on the last day of his life, and the Lord saw that his repentance was genuine, and that very moment, he was delivered. He's going to be on the good side of the kingdom. He escaped the leg of fire. Mm -hmm. All these guys had to do was do the same thing. Right. But they've been so wicked until it, that never come to their mind. And they haven't read the book that never come to their mind. But that thief, he had some understanding. Because mm -hmm. when he said, when thou comest into thy kingdom, that showed me then that he had some understanding. Because mm -hmm. ain't nobody going nowhere until his kingdom comes. Teach. But go ahead. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. And hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Go ahead. And from the wrath of the Lamb. Uh-huh. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? I correct myself. Jesus wasn't standing there. He was sitting there. So when they saw him sitting, they knew drama was coming. And let me, and let me show you. What's going to happen when he get up off that throne? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus paid a big price, sister and brother. And you're going to ignore him and think you're going to get away with it? 
I don't think so. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. See, this is the part of uh, Jesus that the world don't know about, sisters and brothers. They don't have a clue. Sometime I, I turn on television and I listen to ministers preach about Jesus. Oh, he's so sweet. He loves everybody. You can't do no wrong that he's going to hurt you for. The Lord know that you flesh. Them old laws, get, he know you can't keep them. How's God going to give you something you can't keep? How your creator going to set you up to fail? Right. Right. Somebody is not paying attention. But now, Jesus came and he died, and we're going to show you what happened after that. He had to die because animal sacrifice couldn't save us. This is the law, by the way, that was nailed to the cross. Right. Ten and one. Go ahead and read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, uh -huh. and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Now, you know what perfect means? Make the comers there of God. Because only God is perfect, sister and brother. Jeez. Even when the man, young man asked Jesus, uh, good master, what can I do? To get eternal life. He said, why callest thou me good? Mm -hmm. Only God is good. Because he was in the flesh. He wasn't God then. He was man. Jeez. So that's why when they tried to threaten Jesus. Said, you better get a pilot. You have to hide yourself because uh, Herod going to kill you. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to tell that fox. The day I cast out mm -hmm. devils and tomorrow I heal the sick. And the third day I will be made perfect. Jeez. And that's what happened, sisters and brothers. So why couldn't this make the comers there of perfect? Skip down to verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats uh -huh. should take away sins. That's why they couldn't make it perfect, because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. Bulls and goats didn't sin against God. Man sinned against God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, a man had to be sacrificed for this. Being that Jesus was God and he couldn't die, he needed a body. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, uh -huh. he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, Go ahead. but a body hast thou prepared Sacrifice me. and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Look, Jesus had to become man, sister and brother. Father made this body, Jesus took it over, and the angel come and planted it into Mary. And he went his full nine months. That's what it means that the Holy Ghost go overshadow you. It's only sign the Holy Spirit or either the Holy Angel go overshadow you. To do what? He's going to put this body that Jesus has taken over. Mm -hmm. And he went to full nine months. And when he came out, he was man. That's why he kept calling himself son of man. Jeez. Son of man. Jeez. Why? Because he knows somebody going to say, no, he wasn't man. He was God in the flesh. Yeah, but he was man then. Jeez. He had God that became flesh. Like Paul said, God manifests in the flesh. Right. He could die now. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Uh -huh. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Uh -huh. Neither hast pleasure therein, Go ahead. which are offered by the law. That's the law of animal sacrifice. Mm. Couldn't save nobody. The whole world is messed up on that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. That's the first covenant. He took it away, sister and brother, that he might establish the second. This is what people don't understand. God always had, you know, they had uh, a man always did thank you offerings and heave offerings, you know, mm -hmm. and to let God even know when he came, he offered. Jeez. Just pay attention. But offering for sin came later. What came before offer for sin? Fringes. <laughs> Lord called a, the people called a man in the field, picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. They grabbed this guy, and they took it. They didn't know what to do with him. They took it to Moses. Moses didn't know what to do with him either. So they locked him up, mm -hmm. and they sought the mind of the Lord. Then the Lord said, "Take him out and stone him." Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Then the Lord had to come up with something so he won't keep killing people. So he said, "Look." I want you to put, get your garment, put fringes on it with a cord of blue. Mm -hmm. 
so you will look down at these fringes and be reminded to keep my law. But that didn't work. They kept sinning. So he did something. Okay, they're going to keep sinning. If they keep sinning, being that the ways of sin is death, I'm going to kill them all. So I got to do something. So I killed the animal instead of them. Still didn't work. <laughs> so he said, now I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant I made with them in, in the days of old. Mm -hmm. This time I'm going to write my laws in their mind and put them in the inward part. Then nobody have to teach them, thou shalt know the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on right now, sister and brother. The law has been taught. But before that time, fringes didn't help. Animal sacrifice didn't help. So now Jesus had to come. And when he came, when he died on that cross, he took away the old covenant. And he, and, and he instituted the new one. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's what he needed the body for. He needed something that could die. He was God before he was man. You can't kill spirit men. Right. The same Satan that was in the Garden of Eden is going to be the same one that's thrown in the lake of fire after the white uh, uh, just prior to the white throne judgment. That's the thousand year millennium period. Right. Why? God created the lake of fire for them because they couldn't die. So he said, okay, I'm going to punish you forever. So Jesus was spirit too. So he, he needed a body. So, so he was sacrificed once and for all. Go ahead and read. Verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. Go ahead. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Oh, so that's what happened. He came, he died for sin, and he went back to heaven, and he sat down on the right hand of God. Oh, so when the heaven grows back, they saw him sitting there, didn't they? Then they said, hide me from him. <laughs> because he's going to bring some drama. So he sat down at the right hand of God, expecting what? To, Go ahead. Expecting to his enemies be made his footstool. Expecting his enemies to be made his footstool. Why did he expect that? Let's go back and look at it. Let's go into the 110th chapter of Psalms. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you why he expected them to be made his footstool, sisters and brothers. Because when this prophecy was made, sisters and brothers, Jesus hadn't even come in the flesh. But the Lord said he called the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. He think, talk, speak of those things that are not as though they were. Why? Because can't nobody stop it. <laughs> he can tell you how it's going to happen. And it's going to happen that way. Who's going to stop it? Right. Satan tried frustrating uh, uh, God's plan. When he killed Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But then God said, I got to do a little more. I got to die. That's why I said the, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Man really wasn't supposed to die. Right. But being that Satan eased up on the woman because she didn't have her head covering on. <laughs> people think, see, Lord, don't do nothing for, rich, for ritualistic reason. When, when he had uh, Paul to write, cover your head. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the one represent your man is your covering. And God is your man's covering. Jesus is your man's covering. Mm -hmm. And the Father is Jesus' covering. If you don't have a man, then Jesus is your cup. And if you don't make any moves or accept any kind of agreements, accept your covering, know about it, then you can't be touched. Jeez. So Satan called Eve, I guess when her covering was over there naming some atoms or something, <laughs> and slew the whole creation. So now, his plan B, he had to come in the flesh, and he had to die, and raise from the flesh and let us know that you can still live forever. And he went on back and sat down at the right hand of the Father, expecting his enemy to be his footstool, because it is written, 110th chapter of Psalms and verse 1. Go ahead. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, this is the Father said unto David's Lord, which is Jesus. Sit thou at my right hand until I 
make thine enemy thy footstool. That's why when he rose from the dead, he went back to heaven and sat down, still sitting there. You know, he's God. He can sit forever. Right. <laughs> His legs ain't going to start hurting him and all that stuff. You understand? Like I was with. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Uh -huh. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The Lord is going to send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. He said, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. And let me show you what he's going to do. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5, go ahead. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Uh -huh. He shall judge among the heathen. He's going to strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Then they say, hide us from, from the land because the day of his wrath has come. He's going to strike through kings. Go ahead and read. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall fill the places with dead bodies, sisters and brothers. Jeremiah told you when we started out, he gonna, the, the slaying of the Lord is going to be from one end of the earth to the other. It's going to be so many killed, that's why you got to get uh, uh, carnivorous birds and carnivorous uh, uh, beasts to eat all these dead bodies, sisters and brothers. It's just going to be too many to, to bury. Right. The Lord is going to do this. He's going to fill the places with dead bodies. Go ahead and read. He shall wound the heads over many countries. And he's going to wound the heads over many countries. But before he do that, the Lord is going to come, sisters and brothers, and put a mark on his servant. Mm. So when he bring this big raft down, if you, have, if you are inside of the wilderness, you ain't got no problem. You done missed it all. You ain't got to worry about nothing. But if you're outside of the wilderness and you have survived this great tribulation, and you have stood your ground as a servant of God, even if you had to suffer, then he's not going to punish you. He's going to put a mark on you. Let's go into Revelation 7 chapter and look at it. That's before he getting ready to bring this great destruction that we have been reading about on this earth. That's what I like about God, sister and brother. When he looked down and destroyed, when he got ready to destroy the whole world, he looked down and saw one man. On the whole planet, that's, that mean, that let me know that God don't overlook nobody. Right. This righteousness is this one man saved his whole household. Let's think about it. You got this whole world full of people, and you're the only one that's righteous, and God notices you. See, this is why I like this God. If you do the right thing, you don't have to wonder, I wonder if the Lord's going to take care of me. No, he's going to do it because he said he's going to do it. Jeez. But you got to do what you told him you're going to do when you come under the covenant. That's when you get baptized, you're going to be baptized into the covenant, sister and brother. Then you're going to deal with all the grievance of the covenant. That's why when the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments, he said, make sure you write these the way they should, because after the tenor of these words have I entered into a covenant with you, right. which is a commandment. God is a commandment, uh, is a covenant God. If you're going to serve him, and if you're going to get something for him, then you got to enter into agreement. I'm going to do all these things you want me, then you're going to make me God. I think that's a pretty good trade-off. Right. <laughs> right. Seven and one. Revelation seven and one. Go ahead and read. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, uh -huh. holding the four winds of the earth, Go ahead. that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, this is, this is after when the heaven had rolled back now. And all of the great men calling for the rocks and mountain to fall on him. Because they're looking at him now, sitting there. Then he's going to send his angel. And he goes, I want you to hold back the nation. These are the four winds of the earth, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. To hold back the nation. Because I don't want them to hurt anything until I see my servant. Go ahead and read. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and uh -huh. the sea. Go ahead. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servant of our God in their foreheads. He says, I don't want you to hurt nothing until we have sealed my servants in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, this is just Israel, since everybody talk about the hundred and forty four thousand. <laughs> right. But they weren't the only one sealed. Right. And you get this 
uh, 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 religious running around talking about, yeah, I don't know, call them Jehovah's <laughs> something. <laughs> Said 144,000 in the hierarchy of their church or something like that. Yeah. And then I asked the question, oh, you mean all the people that's in charge of your church are Israelites? <laughs> no, no. I said, well, they said 124,000 of the tribes of Israel. Right. See. <laughs> That's why I ask them every time. <laughs> you understand? Like I asked the Jewish people when they said, well, we studied the Torah. I said, ain't that the first five books of Moses? Uh -huh. Yes. Well, why is it that you got the star David? David wasn't in the Torah. <laughs> Listen to people. And you will let, and that will let you know that they don't have a clue what they're talking about. It's just like two people can't read, and one know that he can read, and the other one don't know it. He got the newspaper upside down. He's just talking. Well, you know, yesterday, 1,500 people died of blood, and you said, boy, he is so smart. He ain't so smart. It's just that you're so dumb. And these are things you have to understand, sister and brother. But anyway... Now, he sealed 144,000. These are all Israelites. But skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and read it. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, uh -huh. of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, uh -huh. and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Now, these are people that were really converted during the Great Tribulation. Because this is what the Great Tribulation is all about. This is not all Israel, because we're going to show you that a lot of people have seen, but they don't even know what's going on. But these are the people that's really in the immediate area mm. where the drama is going to go down. Mm. These are the people, not only Israel, these are people that was converted. All of a sudden, they find out the Holy Father is not so holy, and he ain't the Father. Jeez. Jeez. And the Holy Seed is not really the Holy Seed. That just took the deal off so it wouldn't offend you. Jeez. And when they find that out, they're going to stand for the Lord even if they have to get starved to death. Mm. Other than that time, that's the time when you, you can have a pocket full of money. But if you don't have a mark, which is called the mark of the beast, you ain't going to be able to eat. What do you think he got the mark of the beast in your forehead and in your right hand? Who do you think put that out there? Satan, he's always mimicking God. Jeez. God going to seal his service in their forehead? I'm going to seal mine. Jeez. And he's getting all his servants ready for him every Ash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Making you think that that is godly. That is not godly. But anyway, the Lord said, look, when I'm going to serve, I'm, 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 I'm going to 144,000, I'm going to put my mark on, and out of every kindred nation and tongue, I'm going to put a seal on them. That come out of, did you finish that whole verse? Yes. Out of every kindred, tongue, and nation. That lets you know that God's going to save everybody that want to be saved wherever they are. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is do what God tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So now once he's marked him, now he's getting ready to bring his drama. Let's go into 8th chapter of Revelation. Revelation 8th chapter and start at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when he had opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Uh -huh. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now these seven angels, when they start blowing this trumpet, sisters and brothers, that means drama is coming. Mm -hmm. Somebody is going to suffer. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6, and go ahead. And the seven angels, which had seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Uh -huh. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. Now, and, now the Lord bringing all this down. And they were cast upon the earth. Go ahead and read. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. See, this is mainly right here before the Lord come. This is in this one area here that's controlled by the beast and false flock. So they're going to burn up a third part of the, weed, the grass. They're going to burn up a third part of the weed. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, 
and the third part of the moon, uh -huh. and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. Go ahead. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the, of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Now, so if you think that's bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> wait till these other three angels blow their trumpets. <laughs> And it's each one of them blows, sisters and brothers, is going to get just a little worse. But we're just going to deal with these last, we're going to look at these last three trumpets that's going to be blown. And I'll show you what's going to happen. Let's go into Revelation, the ninth chapter. Revelation 9, and start at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now this star, look, sisters and brothers, there's more than one star. There's heaven, there's three heaven. Satan can't get back to the heaven where the father is. Right. Told him you can't get there. But then Paul called him the prince of the power of the air. Right. He can go so far, but he can't make it. So now the Lord is going to say, okay, I'm sending you to do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And this star going to fall from heaven, and he have a key to the bottomless pit. Go ahead and read. And he opened the bottomless pit, uh -huh. and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. Go ahead. And the sun of the, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Go ahead. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Uh-huh. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, this is not a big hole in the ground, sisters and brothers. Right. This, this pit, this is talking about people and nation. In particular, this is talking about the Western Europe. Nobody know what they're going to do. Nobody know who is controlling Western Europe, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Angel of the bottom is pit, Satan the devil, sister and brother. So what's going to happen is he's going to activate these people. And when they come, they're going to do something. They're going to attack Eastern Europe. People think that Russia is going to do the attack. No, Russia is just putting her house in order. But he ain't going to come on this side of the Euphrates River. But we're going to go, but the Western Europe is going to go and attack them on that side. So when these locusts come up, this is talking about the army, sisters and brothers. These are people that's coming to try and restore the whole, the old Roman Empire. Because mm -hmm. that's the whole thing they want to do is take this earth back to the glories of Rome. The last one that tried to do it was Mussolini. Right. But we got one more, and I know he's living now. Mm. He's going to put it together. Jeez. And he's going to assault Rome, uh, uh, the rest of the world, sisters and brothers. When he come up out of his bottomless pit. So these are not locusts. These are not bugs. These are people. These are armies. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing. Go ahead. Neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So he's going to punish them that don't have my seal in them. I don't want you to kill them. Let's read that. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, uh -huh. but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. They're going to be tormented five months. Go ahead and read. And in those days shall men seek death uh -huh. and shall not find it. Go ahead. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. As far as I can see, this has to be chemical of, uh, of germ warfare, sister and brother. They don't want to kill them. What they want to do is bring them in under the umbrella of the old Roman Empire, or either Babylon the Great. They want to take it back to the days of Nebuchadnezzar and back to the days of the Caesar, when the whole world is under their control. They don't want to kill them. And they're going to punish them for five months. In the meantime, Jesus is still sitting there, <laughs> and people are still looking up. People say, well, you, how are you going to look way over to heaven? Because the Lord said, everybody's going to see him. So however way he accomplished that, He's going to accomplish it. He said, and it's going to be. Five months. All is going on, and he is just still sitting there looking down at this man. And who do they have over him? Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11, and go ahead. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. That's the angel of the bottomless pit. Go ahead and read. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, uh -huh. but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And both of them mean destroyer, sisters and brothers. This is Satan. He's the destroyer. Go ahead and read. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now, that's just one woe. Right. When the West, when, when you, the EU, and their army is going to attack uh, uh, Russia, 
People don't understand. These 10 nations are going to rule all of Western Europe. They already have uh, 31 armies. Mm -hmm. 31. And when they get mobilized, this is going to be a huge military offensive. And the world ain't seen nothing this. And we're going to show you this. We haven't seen this kind of stuff. One war has passed, and here come another one. What verse? Verse 13. Uh huh. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. Go ahead. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Remember these four angels? That keep the words and hold back the four winds. Them four angels, that's those of the nation. So where were they? They are right between, because Euphrates River separate East and Western Europe, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. This is where the world is deceived. They keep thinking about America, the great power of America. No, America is not the last, not last big bully on the block. Nope. He's growing up in Western Europe. Kept trying to stay under the American banner until we got this smart president that we got. <laughs> and he sided with all of the enemies and spit on all the allies. Mm. And they said, we got to do something. Like the French president mm. said, look, we got to get our armies together against Russia and America. Jeez. But ain't nobody paid no attention to that. Mm. So we don't know whose side America's going to be on. Right. But we know one thing, America going to have to be on somebody's side because America is not the main player here. People don't understand that. Right. The main player is the EU and Russia. Jeez. All that simple. Go ahead and read what verse? Verse 15. Uh -huh. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. That's a whole lot of people. Think about how many people is on this earth. That's a lot of people, ain't it? Mm -hmm. To slay the third part of men. Go ahead and read. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. That's 200 million soldiers. There ain't never been an army that big, sisters and brothers. Right. Since man been existing. Now I see why Russia has got to put together all the nations that's east of the Euphrates or east of Turkey. Mm -hmm. They've signed a non-aggression pact and doing military maneuvers with China. Jeez. This smart guy we got <laughs> that made a bad move and now North and South Korea going to eventually mm. come together. Everybody over there, Czechoslovakia, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Bulgaria, right. all of these people mm -hmm. that Russia's taking over now, all of these people are going to be under Russia's banner. Mm. And it takes all of these people to produce 200 million soldiers, sister. That's a lot of soldiers. We're not just talking about citizens, soldiers. Right. But these are the ones that's going to be loose. Is it a number of them? Mm -hmm. 200 thousands, thousand. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And I heard the number of them. Uh huh. And thus I saw the horses of the vision, and, and them that sat, upon, sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. Uh -huh. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Look, let's think about it now. This is, this is the apostle John. <laughs> Mine has been focused way in the future. And he see all these war machines. He bought, well, this look like locusts here. You know, mm -hmm. look like the face uh, was bringing in with the mm -hmm. machine. I see fire and brimstone coming out their mouth. This is a muzzle blast. This guy here, he did the best he could. But those of us in the last days, we know what he's talking about. Sweet. This guy that wrote Revelation saw all of these. And what did he say? Go ahead and read. Verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Now, who was killing these? Russia and her ally, the kings of the east. Let's look at it. Let's go into Revelation 16 chapter. Revelation 16, because when you blow a trumpet, then you got seven other angels with vials of wrath. Right. Trumpet blow, he pulled a wrath out on the earth. So now here's the wrath, dealing with this same river, Euphrates. Revelation 16, and we're going to start at verse 12. Revelation 16 and verse 12. You remember that was under the sixth trumpet. Mm -hmm. So this is the sixth vial of wrath. Go ahead and read. 
And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, uh-huh. and the water thereof was dried up, Go ahead. that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All you got to do is get you a map and look at the Euphrates River, and you find whoever's east of that river, those are going to be Russia's allies. The kings of the east going to be prepared. The kings of the east. Some of these people not right now, America thinks that they're their allies. <laughs> right. No, they're not. If they were, they ain't going to be when this time come, and this time is already up on the system. Mm-hmm. Things are moving quick, fluently, right now. Right. You get one man, he done, all of a sudden he done rearranged that, the whole world. Jeez. The whole world. It's going to be just like that. But go ahead and read. 13, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, uh-huh. and